the overall outlook for sub-Saharan Africa is quite positive. We expect growth this year to be about 5.1%, which is the same as it was before the global economic crisis. So Africa has rebounded quite quickly after the, the global economic crisis. Uh, now, there are some variation across those, but some of our uh, faster growing countries are places like Tanzania and Ghana and Kenya and so on are expecting 7 or 8 percent growth. I think Ethiopia is expecting 10 percent growth. Uh, so it's quite positive. Now there are some serious risks to that forecast. Perhaps the most significant one being the high food and fuel prices uh, facing uh, the, the world uh, today. But on food prices it's really quite interesting. While the global food price index has risen by as much this year as it did in 2007-8, African domestic prices have not risen by as much. Partly because the composition, the basket of goods that Africans consume is different. For instance, it's the wheat prices that have risen, but Africans consume rice and, and millet and, and other, other cereals. But the other reason is that the domestic harvests have been very good in 2010. So domestic supplies are actually quite plentiful in, in many countries, not all. And that it gives uh, a, a bit of a cushion. Uh, but I think most importantly, on both the food and fuel prices, the policies that African countries put in place at the last crisis are beginning to pay off. So now farmers are getting more of the I increase in prices down into their pockets, thanks to better infrastructure and better marketing and, and so on. And even with fuel prices, I think many countries have realized that when fuel prices go up, you shouldn't freeze the domestic price because that's counterproductive. It doesn't help the poor. You let the domestic prices rise, but then you give cash transfers or safety net programs to the poor. So in Ethiopia, for instance, what, the last time when food prices went up, they double the wage they pay in their safety net program, the public works program, so that the poor people who work in that program are now getting more money with which to buy the higher priced fuel and food. The simple point is that Africa should trade with whoever they can get the best prices. And it so happens that it's the emerging markets that are growing rapidly at the moment. There isn't much growth in the traditional partners like, such as Europe and the United States. So Africans are selling to who's going to be buying, which is the Chinese, the Indians, the Brazilians, and, and so on. So I think that's perfectly fine. Uh, and we have observed that. Uh, it's also happening to be the case with investment, that there's been a substantial increase in investment from China and India and Brazil in, in Africa. And that too is, is a perfectly welcome uh, co uh, contribution because there are huge investment and infrastructure needs in Africa and that we, no, no one country can fulfill all those needs. So we need all the partners we can get. I think what's important is that African governments sign contracts with these uh, partners that are in the best interest of the African people.